I've become a big fan of using Parcel for all kinds of web applications, including my React projects over the last few months. And I wanna show you why. So let's go ahead and take a look at the package.json that I have. I just have the Parcel bundler. The version doesn't matter so much. Of course, you could always just run, um, you know, yarn add and Parcel-bundler or npm install, uh, either way, just go ahead and install it now before you actually get started. Um, so it's actually really, really simple on how we run it. First and foremost, we just call a index.html file. So the standard HTML file that you're gonna be building off of, and really I'm just copying and pasting some incredibly simple code here as we see, right? So not a big deal as far as the code itself, all we need to do now is add in index.js. And now I'm gonna go ahead and import some React file or copy and paste some React files. Um, so notice that I never actually installed React and React DOM. This is actually a critical feature of this. So what I wanna do now is actually add in some scripts here. So the script I'm gonna start with is simply start, and this is gonna be parcel, and we're gonna go ahead and serve our index.html file and leave it as that. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and run yarn start and we'll see that it says parcel serve index.html. What we're also noticing is that it's resolving packages. So literally it's adding all of our dependencies for our project as we need them, right? So we've got React and React DOM in here and any other dependencies that we might have needed inside of index.js. Now to me, this alone is worth using parcel. Like it's so nice to be like, oh, I just wanna use this package and not having to stop the server from running, not having to actually install it yourself, parcel will just do it. Now, of course, there might be times where you don't wanna use whatever the default that parcel does and you wanna be a little bit more explicit, totally get that. But while you're developing a lot of projects, you don't actually need to go about doing that. Uh, so with that, we now see, hey, hello world, it's in there, it's running, it's working. How cool is that? Uh, so the next thing is something like either CSS or SAS, either way, we're gonna go ahead and do link uh, real equals to style sheet and href equals to index.css, right? So you may or may not run with this method itself, but notice that I don't have an index.css file as it's indicating here. So it's giving me a nice error there. Uh, no problem, I just need to add in index.css. Uh, but you can also use sass as well. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say h1 and you know color being red. Uh, really, really bad HTML, but you know, let's take a look. I save it. Um, so right now it's still saying that it can't find index.css. So let's go ahead and just rerun it. And what do you know? There is hello world. And what I also see is a dist folder. So this folder itself, if we look in here, we've got index.html. It's giving me built files for all of this, right? It's got my CSS, some additional JavaScript. And if we actually look at the CSS, um, what we see is a non-minified version. This of course is because this is just the development version, right? So I'm, I'm actually in development mode itself, uh, which is really, really nice to know that this even exists, that it has two different kinds of modes. So the other one is actually building something and that is really simple. So let's copy the start call and we'll call this build. And now it's just parcel build index.html. We'll close out the server here, yarn build. And now it's actually gonna create a build file for us, uh, which means that it's also gonna be giving me uh, React production. It's gonna actually minify everything for us. Um, but, you know, unfortunately where it actually put it is not necessarily where I want it to be. So I'm actually gonna change where the destination is. I'll give it a dash D here, and I'll call this my build directory, right? So I run that again, um, and now what it's gonna do is actually put it in this build folder here. Now this is actually really good. In some cases you might wanna do, you want, wanna actually remove that build folder first and then build it, right? So you can chain together uh, those commands there. Uh, but what we see here is now a minified version of that CSS as well as our index.html file. So both of those things are minified, which is incredibly nice. 
Um, so another thing that we also would probably want to do, especially when you're going into production, is change the public URL. So if we actually change this public dash URL to maybe like your CDN, so cdn.mydomain.com slash you know, static slash app, something along those lines, you would actually be able to change it like this. So if you're using this in Django or if you're using this in other kind, like other frameworks or like some sort of different backend and you just wanna serve the static files itself, that is the HTML, the CSS, and not necessarily the index page, that's how you go about doing it. And that would actually change um, the URLs themselves. So what we'll see in just a moment. And of course you can actually use this public URL also, you don't actually have to just do it in the build. Uh, you can actually just do it inside of, oops, I think um, I think we made a little bit mistake with this and and here. This ampersand does not need to be there. It needs to be attached just like that. Um, but what we would do here is actually grab this public URL and we can add this in here to being, I don't know, something like static slash app as well. So if you're in local development uh, and you want it to be on, you know, your local server static files, um, that's a way to do it. Uh, so let's go ahead and build it yet again with that public URL written correctly. So this is really nice if you for sure can actually deploy it there. So if you can't deploy it there, then of course you're probably not gonna use that method. Uh, but that that's also really important for all of the other files that are in here. So if you watched my React and Django project itself, um, that was one of them that I actually didn't use parcel for, but I totally would now if I were to do that again. Because in this build file, what we see here now is the references to the CSS and the JavaScript. The other more important part about this is the maps, the actual CSS map or the JavaScript map will also be referenced there as well. So both of those things I think is pretty cool to see that we would be able to actually use all of that. Um, so there's, there's probably more things that we can talk about with Parcel itself. But I really just wanted to give you a quick little overview of how I use it and how I've been using it for all sorts of projects. Uh, and that's that's pretty much it. I mean, if you were to bring this into a Django project, which I think a lot of you might end up doing something like that, because if you watch a lot of my other stuff, it is built in Django. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do is make a build command. So like build.sh. And I would be actually building in a very similar fashion as I did in package.json so i would actually come in here and cut this out and do build.sh instead and then using a script file then that's when i would actually build this in and then i would actually copy uh, recursively so cp dash capital r um, of whatever the build is to where let's say my django static files are uh, as well so let's say you know path to Django project and you'd come in here and do something like that uh, so that your actual static files can be moved over and then the other part is copying um, the build slash index.html and then now path to Django template dir you know something like that where it's like react and base.html something along those lines. This is absolutely something I do fairly often. And I think it actually cleans up building your React project for a Django application. Uh, but of course, that's only for those of you who are using Django. But it's also nice to see that you can move these things around. And as long as you're using that public URL thing here, uh, it will actually clarify a lot of how your index file is running off of those you know, JavaScript and CSS files that you might end up using, which I think is also pretty, pretty cool. Um, so the reason I also bring in base.html here or move it into something like this, if you are in Django, is I can actually mention there's another really cool thing about this is you can still use Django template tags. So if you said something like include and navbar.html, this will actually still build and work. So um, the parcel is not going to remove these things unless you are using a package that would remove those things. So another way to look at this is if I actually run that build again. So let's go back into uh, package.json. Notice that it is going to be calling that build, uh, but I'm actually going to undo that 
and just leave it as it was and do yarn build now. And so when I come into build here, what we'll end up seeing is inside of that HTML file that's in that build directory, it actually does keep the Django template data that you might want to end up using in a Django project. To me, this simplifies also bringing this into Django. Uh, it would work with Jenga uh, or Jinja, excuse me, the templates that Flask uses or FastAPI. Django can use it as well. Um, so that's also really, really nice for those attributes. So that's uh, Parcel. If you have any questions on this, let me know. Otherwise, I uh, hope to see you in the next one.